Hello, welcome to the show. Norm, thank you for coming to the show. Yeah, Norm. it's great, man. I'm excited. Yeah, this is great to have you here. <laughs> <laughs> I like the donut prints, and I'll tell you why. Okay. Man has humility. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he owns the joint. He could easily be the donut king. Right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's humility a, is a lost virtue, Tommy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm going to have to ask him about that. I actually met the Donut Prince yesterday. You did? Yeah, I went down there and met him, and I asked him if it was all right if we spoke about his his establishment yeah, on our yeah. television show. Yeah. Actually, ran it past him. Yeah. He seemed pretty uh, happy to have us talk about it. Believe it or not. Well, sure, he'd love that, yeah. man. Unless he's a, a brutal prince. Yeah. Could be. <laughs> uh, it's just was one of those things where you know there's all these old businesses in Los Angeles and uh, you enjoying the electronic cigarette norm I just yeah. I, I gave you that I never had it yeah this is uh, I've been uh, you gotta let go of the button though when you're not smoking it or oh, it'll, yeah, yeah, it'll yeah, blow yeah. up in your hand it's a bad it's essentially a battery that will explode if you it, the thing about that brand of electronic cigarette uh, not to uh -huh. go on and on about it but if you put it in your back pocket and you sit on it uh, you'll you'll feel it starting to burn a hole in your, wow. in your ass yeah so. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had the experience, you don't smoke, but uh, uh, a pack of matches suddenly igniting inside of your... Uh, uh, that actually happens? Sure, it happens quite, quite frequently amongst uh, common smokers. You know uh, Machiavelli? Mm -hmm, sure, yeah. Yep. In his later days, he became a big fat pig. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all he wanted to do was eat, and he wrote a famous treatise on uh, power uh, by uh, eating. It was called the Donut Prince. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, the Donut Prince would uh, fake his own death to hide from his enemies in a pile of cronuts or something like that, right? I this network is owned by Mark Cuban. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. an interesting side note I did a show called The Sports Show, and Mark Cuban liked it and wanted to do it on his network, which was at a different name at that point. Yeah, HDNet, yeah. And. Uh, I love my favorite team because my son's favorite team is the Dallas Mavericks. Right, absolutely. And yeah. I don't know basketball. I'm from Canada, like you. Yeah. Well, you you're, don't know basketball. No, you, you, you know a lot about sports, though. I do know you're a lot about sports. You're a big sports fan. But I would not pick the Dallas Mavericks, but my son loved them. And uh, my son was very angry at Mark Cuban because uh, the Mavericks had a shot at Jerron Williams. And, uh, you know, the... There, everyone was trying to woo him. Yeah. And when Jerron Williams went to Dallas to meet uh, the Mavericks ownership, uh, Mark Cuban was here in L.A. getting makeup done for their Shark Tank. Okay. All right. <laughs> so you're trying to get me fired right now, is what you're saying? Is that what? It <laughs> no. God bless Mark Cuban. Yeah. I love him. Well, so you. I got... love a guy in the, in the, that's with his team. He's in the stands. He's cheering on his. You know, he's yeah. a fan. That guy. Absolutely. He's a fan. He treats his players. Like no other owner street there, but you know he's like the anti like Jerry Jones. He's been very that. supportive of uh, this little show here. Oh, he's he has sent me uh, many uh, encouraging emails. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. So now you uh, are doing a great new television show now, a podcast, a video podcast. Yes, the yes. Norm Macdonald Live. I did it for a while, Tommy. Mm -hmm. You were on it. I was. You I were was kind a... enough to be a guest. Yeah. And you know what? Here's how good it was. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't even a TV show. Right. And uh, um, Entertainment Weekly ranked it as the third best TV show. That's amazing. Isn't that incredible? But it is a TV show. Yes, I do it as a TV show. I do it like you're doing this. This is on a TV network. But I do it as a TV show that goes to, um, you know, the Internet. So it's a video podcast. But it's not one of these where where you get a, two comedians talking about some shit nobody knows anything about. Right, right, like this. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I think we're pretty accessible. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I think uh, some of these uh, comedy podcasts right. are so, you know, they're like, uh, and now uh, we're doing the full hour with a guy that's been on Parks and Rec for three months. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of podcasts. Uh, this one is, is, you've got great guests. We do comedy. You had Larry King on. We had the great Larry King. Now, when you had Larry King on, did you, you, you asked, or had, there's some shocking subject matter, I find, that were you trying to shock Larry a little bit, or? Well, he, Larry King said that uh, he was uh, very frightened of death. Uh -huh. And, of course, you take a shot of him saying that, 
and he looks like he's about a week away. <laughs> you know, it's like a skeleton telling you he's afraid of death. Yeah. And he's like, ah. <laughs> So, uh, and he didn't, be- he didn't believe in God, so I was trying to, uh, I know it's very stylish nowadays to not believe in God. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's the thing to do. Right. And uh, especially in comedy, you know. And uh, I, I stay away from that sort of thing in comedy because I find comedy should be funny. Right, absolutely. You don't... <laughs> like imagine in the old days you go, hey, uh, uh, what do you think of, uh, of uh, religion, Lou Costello? <laughs> <laughs> but death, death is something that is a big theme in your comedy, though. Death itself. Death is, yes. Because this is, you want me to tell you why, Tommy? Yes. Because I did stand-up, as you know, uh, uh, in Ottawa, and I was talking about stuff. And Sammy Kinnison came, you know, to Canada, and he wasn't famous or nothing. And he took a liking to me, and he, he took me across the country. And it was the greatest time I ever had. And I was talking about, you know, I, I had a good act. And Sam said to me one time, he goes, you got good jokes, man. He goes, but I noticed you talk about dogs and shit. And he's like, are you really interested in dogs? And I had, a, at the time, about a 25-minute a bit on dogs mm-hmm. and I was like no I don't give a fuck about dogs <laughs> right <laughs> and he said well why don't you just talk about what you're interested in mm-hmm. so from then on it became death right death was the <laughs> do you do you think you think about death more than your average person I, I don't know what the average person thinks I think uh, you know it's always on their mind mm-hmm. you know what I mean but I yeah I will ruminate about it, you know, uh, for long, long periods. Of course, to no, uh, to no uh, purpose or to no avail. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's worthless. Mm-hmm. But I got some material about about it. And but anyways, I did it in my stand-up special, and now that's gone, so I can move on. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm like. I I really I just think about stuff for stand-up, mm-hmm. and then I get caught on one subject for a long period of time, and then once I've exhausted that subject. I'm, I'm free now in my life not to think about death. Cool. Well, we'll, we'll talk more about... Uh, I want to talk more about the podcast. Oh, After yeah, the, yeah. We'll take our first commercial break here awesome, of, the, Tommy. of the show. And we'll be taking calls on Skype. So give us a call here on the Internet using Skype. And we'll be back with Norm MacDonald. Stick around. Yeah. <laughs> We're back with Norm MacDonald, <laughs> and uh, let's take a Skype call from one of our callers, since we've asked people to call, and they're calling. Uh, you're on the air with Norm MacDonald. Do you have a question? Yeah. Go ahead, sir, with your question. Um, yeah. Hey, Norm. Hi, hey, how are you? Tom. Good, and you? Good, good. Happy New well, Year. that was an easy question. Um, yeah. <laughs> Happy <laughs> New <laughs> Year's. <laughs> Don't get nervous. I know you're on live television. You're a little nervous, but just go ahead and ask the question now that we've, uh, you know, told you all we were going to do this in the break, and let's do it now, okay? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, Norm, what's your favorite sport to bet to bet on? To uh, bet on. Uh, my favorite sport to bet on is uh, football, uh, professional football. But it's the worst sport to bet on. And I'll, what's your name? Jay. Jay, I'll tell you the reason that football is the hardest sport to predict. Because the ball ain't round. <laughs> sure. You, uh, under, so you understand that concept, right? Yeah. Like a basketball is round. It's shot, it goes into a hoop. A baseball is round, it hit, it goes somewhere. A football is not round, and, squi- and when it's lost, it goes everywhere. And uh, that's, it's like a sling, and that's why... Don't bet professional football. Don't be like me. What, what, what about golf? You bet on golf? I do bet on golf because you can't get a rounder ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, there's your answer, uh, caller. Thanks for calling. Appreciate it. Hey, thanks, Tom. Yeah. Go Pats. Yeah, now you know, now you know right? So uh, do you take calls on the show on your, on your, on your no, podcast? No, no, no. We tried, but you have it down to a science. But uh, mine, uh, it, was, it was like when you did your show at your house. 
And so we'd do an hour show. We'd take uh, one Skype caller, and we'd be 58 minutes into the show. Yeah, exactly. So uh, it didn't work out. So, But you, you seem to have finally figured it out. So I wanted to ask you, so you've got all this time on the show. Now it's not like television. You can go on for hours if yeah. you want. Uh, and you're somebody that's never really shied away from saying what you feel about things. And we're living in this crazed media culture now yeah, yeah. where people are always apologizing for every word that comes out of their mouth. Do you ever worry that, that you might say something that you can't take back? Or that well, you, you know, regret? I did one thing, because they'll jump on things, as you know, and take things out of context and so forth, you know. And uh, so I was on the Larry King show. I don't know if you've done that yet. On his internet show? Yeah. Yeah, I did once, it, yeah. It was, it's a, that was pretty I cool. love Larry King. Yeah. So he asked me... Uh, my views on science, because he called me a Christian comedian, which is like, what the hell fuck does that mean? You know, it sounds like I'm playing, I'm opening for Joel Osteen or some right. fucking thing. <laughs> and uh, so that's the problem. He called a person a Christian, now all of a sudden it's a bad, you know, you're, it's like calling a person a retard or something. Right. Right. So uh, <laughs> anyways, I told him, I said, uh, I, don't th I don't think that much of science. I said, uh, for instance, DNA. I don't know a fucking pe anything about DNA. What am I? I'm just a nightclub comic. So I said, if there was a guy that was going to jail or going to the death house, and the evidence against him was DNA, and I was in the jury, I'd vote him innocent because 15 years from now they could go, ah, oh, we're wrong. Right. Yeah. So I said that. Then in the fucking somewhere in the, uh, the I see an article. Christian comedian Norm Macdonald doesn't believe in science. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, uh, it's, it's sort of what happened, though, I guess, right? Yeah. O.J. was the one that uh, really was the reason that uh, DNA really became the big, uh, I don't know. I'll tell you something about O.J. Yeah. And how on Twitter you can get in tr not in trouble, because who the fuck cares what these retards say, but uh, I'm saying on Twitter... I said yesterday, I put a post up, I said, uh, uh, you know, my heart goes out to O.J. and his family uh, for his uh, health issues, mm -hmm. and God bless. And people got very angry at me, you know, and, and they're like, fuck O.J., you know, and like, there, there's another virtue that's gone, Tommy. Pity. Whatever happened to pity? Yeah. Do we well, have to hate everybody? Uh, people, probably your fans especially, were maybe surprised to hear it coming from you, considering some of the things you used to say about O.J. on Weekend Update. Well, yeah, I, because I was against O.J. for committing double murder. Yeah. <laughs> One of the great lines in the history. <laughs> But I am not against O.J. for getting brain cancer. Yeah, no. <laughs> right? No, it's perfectly... No, I, I feel uh, sorry for the man. Yeah. My God. And that's true, he does have brain cancer. Is that true? Or I saw that on the cover of the I don't know. Inquirer, then I but... heard that, that he may have made it up. Yeah. That... But, but uh, you know, of course, if a man has brain cancer and uh, he's going to die in prison, how could you feel anything but, but pity for him? That was one of the great lines in the history of Saturday Night Live, your line, when after O.J. was found uh, innocent. Murder is now legal in the state of oh, California. Yes, that's right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, now, what was, there was quite a bit of a backlash to the, that at the time, was there? Or, you... I got fired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I found interesting? You know, I, I, you know, you look back at your career, mm -hmm. and you go, what the fuck did I do wrong? I'm, you know, sitting here with Tom Green on a <laughs> show owned by a basketball owner. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, sometimes you go, what did I do? Yeah. You know? I hear you. Why can't I get one? I, I ask myself that question all the time. Sure, right? You know, we do, you know, when you do outrageous comedy uh, mm -hmm. and you're trying to get a reaction and sometimes you push the envelope maybe further than when you get older, you think, oh, should I have said that? Yeah. Should I have done that? Do you, do you actually think that type, uh, no, type, I, those I type thought, of thoughts? No, I, I came out because I was like, this is weird. I'm not getting jobs, you know? And I thought after uh, I got fired from uh, Weekend Update, everyone supported me. Yeah. You know, everyone was very supportive of me. But then I thought afterwards, like, if, if you were a network president, you go, hey, do I really want to hire that guy, Norm, who, if uh, all of a sudden I fire him, he fucking ruins my life? Uh-huh. You know, because uh, I, uh, you know, Don Olmeyer fired me, 
and and lost his job and never worked again like a year later. Right. Not it had nothing to do with me. It sort of had become a personal thing in the press, at least. It had. The yeah. press, you know what? The press has a narrative. And the narrative in that story, I got fired from Saturday Night Live. Now, before I got fired, there was nobody fucking saying how great I was. <laughs> there was nobody in the press doing big articles on me. Well, I now, think Chevy Chase said that you were the this best. This was after. Best was, weekend uh, update anchor. Chevy since Chase him. did say that, but this was <laughs> after I got fired. Uh -huh. Now, after I got fired, I got fired by a big fat network executive chomping on a big cigar okay. in Los Angeles. And here I was, this guy at 12 o'clock doing five minutes of comedy, right? So the press has to make a story. They love stories. So he's the bad guy, he's the evil guy, right? So if you got a bad guy, you have an evil guy, you got to have a good guy. You got to have a great guy. So they made up that I was a great guy. That well, I was, and, you, and you also happened to be a great guy, and it was unjustified. That was entirely so. coincidental. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> well, it, 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 does, does uh, things like that, do they surprise you when you, know, you come to America from Canada? And yeah, you, I'm very naive. Yeah, did you, did you really? Very, no, you're, you're, I, oh, no, about show business. Yeah, or I, at least I was. Well, I felt I felt that way when I went on yeah. MTV. I had no clue what right. the hell was going on. Right. And then I did a bunch of goofy stuff like getting drunk on the Tonight Show, and uh, you know, yeah, the next yeah, yeah. day you sort of wake up and everyone's saying, "Why'd you get drunk on the Tonight Show?" And I was like, well, "I was just trying to be crazy," you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right. Yeah, so you oh. know, the worst thing that ever happened to me. I never told anybody this, but a week after I left Saturday Night Live. I got a call from Rob Burnett. You know who he is. Sure, yeah. So he, David Letterman's producer. Yeah, he was the producer of David Letterman. He said, I got some bad news for you. And I said, what? And he goes, you're not getting the 1230 slot. And I didn't know I was up for the 1230 slot. Okay. And he goes, he goes, we're giving it to Craig Kilborn. Wow. And I was like, huh? Like, I, nobody told me I was up for it. Wow, okay. And, uh... And then I said, why'd you have to tell me? Like, if you'd never told me, <laughs> I wouldn't have fucking known. Yeah. And then he says, Dave fought for you, but Les Moonves said, no, he wants Kilborn. And I was like, God damn, you don't have to tell anybody ever, you know, fuck it. Sure, sure. You, you can keep some shit to yourself. Yeah, well. Then you know, I'm trying to sleep that night. Yeah, well. On my pillow. Yeah, well, you know, you, we, now you're, uh, you're doing the show now, though. And, uh, oh, know, yeah, it's yeah. all come full. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's true. Now hmm. that I've never looked at it that way. <laughs> I lost the 1230 slot, but if I hadn't lost the 1230 slot, it wouldn't have lent me yeah. to do a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> worldwide. Worldwide. It's yeah. worldwide. You when, know? when one door opens... Yeah. <laughs> Now, how does that go? When one door closes... We'll be right back. Stick around. Right, We're with baby. Norm McDonald. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back with Norm Macdonald and uh, Rob Ford. Rob Ford. Another tweet I put out that uh, that got incredible backlash. Can't say anything nice about anybody. Can't say anything nice about the crack yeah. smoking mayor yeah. or a convicted murderer. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. Well, <laughs> you can't uh, you can't equate those two. You no. Know? Because we've all made mistakes mm -hmm. with different uh, substances through our lives and whatever. Sure. And uh, I like Rob Ford. I actually wonder, I wonder if you think of this, Schneider. Rob, yeah. Rob Ford, I wonder if he is doing uh, Chris Farley. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? We are, of course, talking to our producer, our executive the producer here. The great John Schneider. John Schneider, Rob's yes. brother. Who you've, you've Rob worked, Schneider's brother. You've worked with Or our... I call Rob John Schneider's brother. Yes. So wherever you look at You've it. worked with uh, Rob Schneider on many Rob Schneider movies. Were those fun, the Rob Schneider and movies? John as well. Yeah. Uh, I've worked, uh, oh yes. They've actually been my favorite movies. I love Sandler, but Rob has always given me such leeway in, uh, in movies to do what I want. Mm -hmm. And my favorite one, I think, was The Animal, where I was in The Mob. And he just let me keep talking. <laughs> and uh, uh, Deuce Bigelow, too. European gigolo where he had me 
uh, play a, an old coal mining gigolo. <laughs> do you, so do you think you think Rob Ford is purposely putting on the Chris Farley, the mayor of Toronto? Well, Rob Ford? because he he has the moves down so down pat, you know, that mm -hmm. it almost looks like. Uh, it almost can't be real. Physically, it looks like an impression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I listen, I don't know anything about local Toronto politics anymore. You know, I used to know about him. No. Now, I find that surprising because <laughs> I've heard you say that you don't follow politics, and people are often surprised that you don't follow politics, given that you were the host of Weekend yes, Update. Yes, they are, yeah. But I feel like uh, politics are just gossip, really, and... Uh, uh, you know, uh, you, you, it's pretty easy to tell who to vote for, usually. And also, I think, because we come from Canada. You know, I don't know if people know the parliamentary system, but here, everything's so important. Like, if you vote for the wrong guy, a war might happen. Yeah. You're in Canada, it's like, what's the big, uh, 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 you know, uh, cost issue? cost of maple syrup might go up. cost of maple syrup <laughs> might go up, yeah. <laughs> and then we have this thing, I don't know if Americans are going to understand this, but you don't vote for the prime minister, you vote for a guy in your riding. Yeah. So you vote for this guy, and he goes out and he goes, we're going to fix that bridge that uh, in Vanier. You know, and you go, I don't vote for this motherfucker, because that bridge is shit. Yeah. And uh, so you vote for him, and then he gets in the House of Parliament, and then he gets up and goes, hey, what about that bridge? And they go, what the fuck are you talking about? And he's like, I'll sit down. <laughs> you're, you're, you know. But your brother is one of the uh, big uh, political... Yes, he knows ...correspondents politics. of Canada. The yes, he Mc is... And, Neil MacDonald. Yes, and as you know, CBC uh, and BBC both are very serious journalistic... It's not like here. Yeah. We're, it's gotten ridiculous in America, you, where it's just people yelling at each other. But in Canada, they, they really are, you know, uh, serious journalists. Yeah, and your brother, one of the most respected journalists in Canada, yeah. and you, you parody the news. Is, have you ever thought about why that, how that happened, or why you chose to go these two very distinct, separate ways, but still working in entertainment business, you know? It, well, do you consider the news entertainment? I guess it well, is like, now. Maybe these days. Yeah. Less so in America. <laughs> less so in sure. Canada. Though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and maybe. And I haven't been. I haven't watched Canadian television news in a business, while. I guess I meant the television business. Yes, yes, yes. That would be a good question for Dan Rather. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Rather's on the show next week. Yeah, you can call him on Skype. Let's take a call on Skype right now for for Norm. You're yes, on. Sir. You're on the air with uh, Norm Macdonald. Go ahead with your question, sir. Is this me now? Yeah, that's you. Go ahead and, and, and ask Norm your question. And can I call you Norm? Yes. Right. Sounds Canadian. Yeah. All right, well, tell you what. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, Norm, and it's, I'm not trying to, you know, whatever, but uh, what are you most proud of in your career, man? I'm only really proud of one thing. Uh, what's your name? My name's Connor. Well, Corner. <laughs> Connor, Connor, but close, close. Uh, I am only really proud of stand-up. Everything... Uh, else I've done has just been a, a, an accident that came from stand-up, you know. I've never auditioned for anything that I got, you know, I suck at acting and... <laughs> but my, but my stand-up, I'm very, 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 very proud of stand-up and I'm ashamed of almost everything else. No, but... Th no, I like this interview right yeah. now. <laughs> Well, well, that cool, stand up and this interview. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I when I uh, was a, just a, a a kid in Canada, that was when I discovered stand up comedy. Yes. Going to Yuck Yucks. Yes. And you would, you know, were were not yet uh, on television in America at that no. point, but touring. And we actually have a clip of you. No. From uh, the early days oh, at God. Yuck Yucks. Let's have a quick look at that. that sounds awful. A clip. An early clip, probably 25, 30 years old. Now, I always wanted to be a trucker, you know? And, uh, of course, I can't be a trucker because I don't have my driver's license. You know? It makes the resume look pretty skimpy, you know, as soon as I see that. You know, when you get to the hobbies after they see that you don't have your license, you know? Too bad, too, because my hobby's collecting old trucks. But I always wanted to be a trucker, you know? Driving a big truck. They're very intimidating, though, when you're in a car. You ever be behind a big, big truck full of trembling logs right in front of you? Holy cow. Sometimes you see those trucks where the cargo of the truck will be just wrecked cars. Just a bunch of wrecked cars. You know, holy cow, man, I hit this guy, I won't even notice. <laughs> I'm part of the haul. 
Six months later, oh, there's a guy in this one. <laughs> but, yeah, could you let me out already? I got a kink. <laughs> How's it feel to look at that? Do you remember that? Remember yeah. that bit? I don't remember the bit, but uh, it makes me feel bad looking at it because I, I, I don't like it. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, it takes so long to be good at any, uh, not at anything, but specifically at stand-up. And when you look at old uh, stand-up, it's, uh, it's not a lot of fun because uh, I don't, I'm, I'm sure it's like that with everything. I'm sure like Picasso was like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking nose looks like a nose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> but uh, uh, How old were you there in that, that clip? And my voice was way up high. Yeah. You know, I used to freeze with fear. And my voice, I'd be all, my voice would be normal. And then as soon as I got on stage, my voice, something happened to it. And do you notice my voice is high? And yeah, I, I've noticed actually in some of your older yeah, clips yeah, yeah. that you are speaking higher. Yeah, yeah. Decibel? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, uh, well, you know, that's, uh, that, those were the... You those know, were... I'll tell you something interesting. And John Schneider's part of this story, too, but... In such a small way, I should never have brought it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when you decided you were going to be a stand-up, and you called it a return to stand-up, but let's be honest, yeah, I'd... you were never a stand-up no, before. Sort of... <laughs> not really, no. I Did amateur say, night at Yuck Yucks. I would say Ottawa. five years ago you started. Mm, yes. Was that, was that right? Yeah, about that, yeah. And I remember you talking about it with me on, the, um, on your uh, show, your previous show. You went down. I was doing, I believe, the Irvine Improv. Mm -hmm. And you said, could I do a spot? Yeah. Johnny came down with you. You went on stage. And I got to say, I'd never seen a guy go on stage that in command of the audience. You went on. You bounded on stage with complete control of the audience. And I didn't know that you really worked with audiences before that. Yeah. Did, did you? I mean, I know you would go on the street, and that's a yeah, just that's more, an audience more too. the audience on the TV show, and uh, you know but the studio audience. audience. Yeah. Yeah, but that's different. Yeah. I mean, I, I always feel like a studio audience is in on it. Well, it's they're in on it. Like these, you got a studio audience, you yeah. a small one. They're in on it. Yeah. They're with us. They're not going to heckle us. But you know, you go on a, a you go and do stand up. And these motherfuckers that tear you apart, you don't get a laugh for five minutes. They hate your guts. Yeah. When I started writing, you know, I got a job on Roseanne, you know, a great show. And I'd look at the script. I'd go, well, this is, every fucking joke's going to bomb. That's what I'd tell people. Yeah. i go, it's, nothing's going to work because I, I was comparing it to stand-up. Sure. Whereas if I went up with these jokes in stand-up, I'd have no chance. Right, right. And uh, so that's what I love about stand-up so much. The quality of the material has to be so high. Or if it's not the quality of the material, it's the uh, showmanship, you know, which I think you excel at. Well, and I remember when you very first, nice of you to say When it. you first started, you were going, oh, let's do crazy shit. Uh -huh. Like I get a call from Tempe, and I go, is Tom's there this week? You go, that crazy motherfucker's out on Main Street wearing an aluminum suit and shit. <laughs> And getting people to march. That, for some reason, I thought when I, I started touring that maybe if I, I asked my audience to show up and wrap tinfoil around their head before the show, that might yeah, help yeah, with yeah, ticket yeah. sales. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's sort and of I it. think I saw on YouTube, because I always follow you, you know? Yeah. yeah. You know I always follow you. Yes. And I think I saw you and a bunch of motherfuckers jumping into a swimming pool in a holiday inn. Right, yeah, in St. Louis. Yeah, no, it's, I've been loving it on the road. Okay, we're going to talk more about life on the road, uh, stand-up comedy with Norm MacDonald. Taking your calls. We'll be right back after the breaks. <laughs> we're back. We're here in the studio with Norm MacDonald. We're taking your calls, and we have I'd a... I'd like to say one thing before we yeah. take a call. Mark Cuban, who owns this network, <laughs> I predicted on Twitter... And it was a long shot prediction that he would win the championship uh, three years ago. And he did. Yep. And I went to, I took my son, we're the biggest fans ever, uh, to uh, um, Dallas and watched. And he's a great man. And uh, I, I, I thought at the time I should have put him on the sports show so I could go and be backstage and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you should but do. But maybe because I'm on this show. Maybe you should do a sports show here on this network. He offered me that. Yeah, you should do it. Yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, a... we have a... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just a Dallas Mavericks sports show. Yeah. yeah. We have a, a surprise uh, call here from uh, 
Epic Meal Time. I love Epic Meal Time. Harley Morenstein and Adam Sand is, are on oh, the Oh, these guys are phone. awesome. Yeah, hey, Harley, how are you, man? Hi, how are you? Long Good. Long time no see, buddy. Yeah, are you in Los Angeles right now? No, I'm in Canada. Okay, yeah. I belong. It looks like Canada, actually. <laughs> looks like yeah, what it's a very Canadian basement. It's what an American would say. I'm in Canada. What fucking city are you in? <laughs> From Montreal. Oh, beautiful city. God damn. So how I was born in Quebec City. I know. You know that? I know all about yeah. you, Norm. God damn. So have I've you guys met before? Page. Have you met Moments Norm before? before? Do you guys know each other? Uh, no, but Norm said my name once. I, I heard him say it on, uh, on the computer. I love Epic Mealtime. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, Epic yeah. Epic Mealtime loves you. Uh, you guys should come on Epic Mealtime together. Or yeah. alone, however you want. No, but that'd be way, fun. So, are you shooting new? I episodes? only work with Tom now. Yeah, we're a, we're gonna do a new. Uh, like the comedy. Smothers Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. We should do a nice Canadian edition. Yeah, yeah. So, Harley, do you have a question for Norm or anything? Uh... Uh, yeah. Well, I actually thought that I would I would pass my question along to my buddy Adam over here because he's been he's been dying to ask this question. Yeah, I've been dying to ask this all night. All right, go ahead. He uh, advised me to ask this specific question. That's not true. I don't even know what he's going to ask. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, basically, number one, I'm a big fan of the sports show, Norm. Oh, thanks. That, that. And also the YouTube videos. Uh -huh. And I wanted to know the chances of you and Artie getting back together and doing a second dirty work. Oh, my God. I, 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 had a, I wrote a script for it uh, no. where Artie, uh, where Artie uh, needs a heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is this a is this a real project that is uh, in the works? Uh, well, I want to do it, and Artie wants to do it, and uh, Chevy Chase wants to do it, and uh, Chris Farley is dead. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Well, Artie was here uh, recently. We had a great time. I on the saw show. him. Yeah. I've watched every one of your shows, Tom. Yeah, I know. I appreciate that. That's, uh... I read Artie's book. Oh my God, it was punishingly good. Yeah. Now, when you're you're Friends with Artie, did you know the extent of what was going on? The, uh, you know that was it, it wasn't going on when I knew him. Yeah, but later I got in trouble because I I said, well, I think uh, he should be off the show, Stern, because what I was worried about was he was becoming like a joke, because Artie's really really funny, and I was like, you can't be the butt of the joke, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you, and you can't be famous as a substance abuser. Because then everybody in the country is enabling you. You know what I mean? Uh -huh, uh -huh. And I went to the Canyon Club and saw him perform uh, in the midst of his uh, problems. And uh, it's just crazy audiences, Yellen's Stern Show audiences, you know. They're not built for listening to stand up comedy. Yeah. Well, it's great that he's doing good now, though. Mm. So this is. He's doing fantastic, yeah. He's a, he got a real good show there on, uh, I don't know if it's a, maybe. A, on uh, Direct TV. Yeah, I don't know if it's a competition. Yeah. And, yeah, it so, is competition. No, I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I don't think we think of it like that. Yeah. Yeah, we're just. Uh, yeah, not at all. No, you can say it. It's on Directv. Can I say it, Michelle? Okay. I love how we're yeah, plugging a Michelle. fucking guy that's not even here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm plugging someone else's show. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, anyways, look, we're gonna take a let's take a quick commercial break. We're gonna be back with one more uh, one more block. The hour went by too fast. Too fast. Too man. fast. But You'll we have still to have me back next yeah, season. Absolutely. We have a little time left. When is McDonald's. next season? Stick Three around. weeks from now. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the first show of the second season right now. Absolutely. We'll be back. <laughs> We're back. Uh, this has been uh, a lot of fun, as always. It went so fast. It's, we know it's by not not over yet. We still How have. How many a, times have you interviewed me? Uh, we, we've done that. Well, you know, on the on the web show, you used yeah. to come t up to my house and do the web show yeah. many many times. Yeah. Then you did a podcast with uh, Kevin Smith. Yeah. I, I and I, I wanted you know because some of those shows would become just more like a free form kind of craziness uh, type of yeah. thing you know remember the night the mountain was on fire and oh we were just my singing God, about there was the... a mountain on yeah. fire yeah. and you used to send up fucking ufo's and shit yeah we would launch <laughs> ufo's I have often thought about that, thinking that was probably some sort of an FAA uh, illegal oh, act uh, of maybe, some sort, maybe, maybe. launching uh, helium-filled <laughs> UFOs off of the deck. But uh, what I want to ask you, because those I, were the days. I, I, 
still, this is an interview in, at the end of the day. We, I am interviewing yes. you, right? right? Yes, sir. So when you, when, you, uh, <laughs> when, you, when you got to perform, and I've talked to you about this before, in front of the President of the United States at the White House Correspondents' Dinner, did you get nervous? I didn't get nervous about the president or any of that shit. What I got nervous about is before we went, and he was showing us all the motherfucking shit, and uh, <laughs> the podium where you stand is uh, bulletproof. Okay. And there's men everywhere with guns and uh -huh. shit. And uh, it made me realize that the presidency, like if I was elected president, the first thing I'd say is, I quit. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, I'm going to do all my speeches from here in this compound underneath the earth. Sure, sure. From now on. So you feel the security on presence. On account of some motherfucker shoot me. Right. And these guys aren't shot by, uh, you know, anybody. You know, listen, if you're willing to lay down your life, like it says in Line of Fire, starring Rene Russo. <laughs> You catch my drift. That's yeah. the only thing that I was afraid of. We have a clip from uh, from this. Uh, let's well, from the president, from the White House correspondent. Very inspiring to see President Clinton up here on crutches making a speech. I mean, I thought that was just uh, amazing. You know, uh, I mean, it's been difficult for the president. You know, he can't jog now, and uh, he needs help getting around, and he still, you know, he still uh, occasionally suffers great pain. You know, uh, on the upside, you got your medical marijuana, so that's. Uh, <laughs> you know, You must inhale, sir. It's the only way you're going to get better. It's... I hope I have time to tell this quick story. Yes, How much time we got? We've got a lot of time. So uh, after the, you meet, you go in a big room, and the president comes in. be 200 people in the room, right? And he's going through with his wife. Now, he looks like a big fucking stoner, big, <laughs> big red face, happy as hell. And you want to meet him. His wife, the most sour looking bitch you ever laid eyes on. <laughs> so, anyways, he's walking, he's talking to every guy. And I'm like, this is fucking weird. I wonder what he's talking to everybody about. I wouldn't know how to do that. Talk to every single person as he moves. And so I was, at the time, I had a sandwich and a pickle and everything. So he's walking <laughs> by me, and uh, Lori Joe, who's here, was with me, and uh, walks by, and he shakes my hand. You're kind of in uh, shock meeting someone that famous, you know? And, uh, and uh, he said to me, he said, I see you're eating a pickle. <laughs> and he moved on. Right? And I was like, that's the coolest motherfucker I ever met. And then uh, late at night, I woke up, like in the movies, in a cold sweat, and I was like, that fucker just asked me about a pickle. Yeah. <laughs> That's basically what he does. He goes around, probably just see, says the first he see, thing. He sees something, yeah. Yeah. So he'd see you. He'd go, "Nice shirt," you know. <laughs> Move on to the next guy. But that's got to be a great feeling to be able to look at uh, that piece of video and see the president of the United States, the most powerful man in the world, doubled over in laughter because of one of your jokes. Uh, I don't look. I don't look at it that much, but I, you know, he can fake it. Yeah. Yep. yep. Uh, Dan Rather. Uh, <laughs> You can, uh, you can, next week, you can have a clip of Dan Rather. Yeah, you do a joke about his uh, oh, smile. You, oh, you saw, yes. Mm -hmm. I said, here's Dan, there's Dan Rather with his frozen smile. Yeah. Uh, he's enjoying the show. And then it cut to him, and he had a frozen smile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is you it, watched the whole fucking thing? Oh, yeah, I've watched it a few times. It's You're the, re you research like a motherfucker. It's, well, that's widely considered to be the best uh, White House correspondence dinner uh, routine ever. Oh. On the internet. It is? They, I think so, yeah. Well, I, we put a lot of work into it, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it fun just speaking <laughs> to powerful people like that and taking the piss out of them a little bit? Yeah, I think so, you know, because you can you can say whatever you want, you know. And uh, sometimes they're doubling over in laughter. Uh, I tell you who never doubled over in laughter was that uh, fucking bitch he, he married. <laughs> Yeah, you know her? Hill, yeah. Uh, Salary Rodham. Yeah, uh -huh. So you're not a fan, I, I take it, of uh, the next president of the United States. I just yeah. go by personality. <laughs> uh -huh, sure, okay. S since unless the guy's going, I'm going to bomb, I'm going to go to war. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When I was young, uh, Reagan was around. I don't know if he's a good president or not, but he was funny as hell. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I remember the funniest thing I heard Reagan say. 
He got shot, right? Attempted uh, murder. Mm -hmm. Tried to kill him. Yeah. Got out. I don't know what it was. Three weeks later, he gets out. And he does a, a, a press conference at the very site where he was shot. And one man, one reporter asked, does it make you nervous at all that you're standing in the very spot that you were shot? And Reagan goes, well, uh, I don't do an impression of him, but he goes, Reagan goes, well, no, I'm not that nervous, but uh, just to be safe, I, I, uh, I didn't wear a new shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the fucking funniest joke I ever heard of Do you think he would have prepared a line like that? I mean, that just sounds, uh, or is he, was he just that funny? I think he was uh, like a naturally funny guy, and uh, one of those guys that was a, an Irish wit, you know. I grew up with, with Irish and Scottish people, and they had that wit, you know, that, that quick, bleak kind of uh, gallows humor yep. wit that he had. Yeah. Well, Norm, I appreciate you coming on the show again oh, today. Oh, well, it was fantastic, man. I hope you have me back. Absolutely. Now, your third season starts next week. Next week is the third season. <laughs> And, uh, no, thank you very much. Always great to have you here supporting yeah. um, these I'd love shows to get back in two months and do the 35th anniversary. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Norm MacDonald, everybody. Thanks, man. Thank great you. to be here. Good night, everyone. See you next week with Dan Rather. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>